Hello. Hello. Hi. How's everybody today? Great. Great. Good. My name is Dave Miller. Uh, I'm going to guess you all know my wife, Julie. <laughs> the question is, how many of you know? How many of you know this Julie? <laughs> this is Julie. In August of 2012, and you want to tell them a little bit about where you were at that point? Um, well, I was 276 pounds, so I was over 100 pounds overweight. Um, I had pre-diabetes, and I was on my weight. You know, joint problems were starting, so I just went to the doctor, and I realized when he told me I had pre-diabetes, this was it: is either get on um, metformin or some kind of diabetic medicine, or lose weight. <laughs> So I begged him, I was like, please just, you know, like try to lose the weight one last time. He's like, yeah, 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 come back in three months. So I lost 10 pounds, and I was off of the medicine, and then that's where it just snowballed and escalated from there. When she came home that day, she said, you know, we got to do something. And so, you know, we joined a gym. We joined uh, Premier next door, and we started looking for things to do. This is me in August of 2012, by the way. I was 370 pounds. At that point, and if you're an Ohio State fan, it's Urban Meyer's shoulder. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, as three I had trouble, you know, breathing. I had trouble tying my shoes. You know, to run was there was no way I was going to run ever. Yesterday, I ran five miles. By the way, in the yeah. thank you. I didn't say that. Um, so the big question is, how did we do it? Well, the simple answer that we'll give everybody is diet and exercise, but it wasn't as simple as diet and exercise because it took a lot of work. We had to start doing things called, we call it tracking, calorie counting exercise recording. We had to track how many calories we were bringing in, how many calories we were going out. And what that helped us do then is it, it helped us see where our calories were coming from, what was causing us to gain weight or to, to stay the weight when we were trying to lose. We found the exercises that we liked that worked best for us. Um, the other thing we did, we did a lot of research. Um, Julie now is an A certified health coach. When she was going through the process last summer of getting that certification, she kept saying, I don't know if, I've, if I know what I'm doing, I don't know if, I'm like, you don't understand, you spent four years researching this. If you were in college, you have a bachelor's degree now. <laughs> The other thing we did is we, we changed a lot of stuff. We started making healthier food choices, substitutions on things. We also made some healthy lifestyle choices. We're going to go through all of that. We also found some support, both in each other, in the community as a whole, and in our family. We'll go through all of these points here in a second. Tracking, Julie's handing out a uh, food uh, journal, in case you don't have one. There's lots of great ones online. The one we used was sparkpeople.com. It it's nice because it's free. You enter in all of your information, all of the goals you want to get. It gives you a complete breakdown of where you want to, you know, how many calories you have to eat, how much you have to work out in a week, how many you have to burn in a week to lose what you want by when you want to do it. There's other great ones as well. My Fitness Pal, I know, is a big one. Uh, I think Under Armour sponsors that one now. And then, of course, you can always just write it down in a journal and if you don't have one. You can make copies of these and use it like this, your master, so you always have one. And we are diligent. We're always writing it down. Everything, everything goes in our mouth. It goes right into our log, yeah. so we know exactly where our food is coming from. And that's the key. You have to write it all down. You have to see. Um, and with that, you have to measure what, what you're putting in. Um, the, the food companies get you all the time. We'll go over the nutritional facts in a little bit, but they get you all the time with serving size. You know, yes, I can eat that quinoa, you know, but one cup is, is the serving size, but I can eat three cups of it, you know, three cups is three times more calories, so you have to track all that, you have to see. For us, um, I'm trying to think some of the foods, it's been four years now, some of the foods that were causing us that we, we cut out because we saw where those calories were coming from, and it was easy to cut them out once we, we saw where those calories were coming from. A lot of them you get in your drinks. You think it's healthy. You sit down, you look at a smart water, and you're like, oh, it's just water that's flavored, right? No, it's full of calories. It's full of sugar. And you see that when you actually write it down, and then you know what you can take out and what to put in. We also did a lot of research. Um, Julie spent more time on this than I did. Um, 
lot, one of the big questions we get is, you know, well, you didn't go out with friends and family, did you? Well, yeah, we did. Just took a lot of research to start. Um, now we can, we're, we're pretty much to the point where we can go out for a night out with friends and family, and we know what to look for now on a menu. Um, by the way, one of the things you would think is healthy when you go to a restaurant are the salads. A lot of times they're the worst thing on the menu. Dressing, cheese, croutons, you know, you think it's just vegetables, but it's not. Um, you know what, what we found most is, um, especially if you go to like a steakhouse, just a small piece of like a sirloin, like a lean cut steak is healthier for you than say the salad would be. <coughs> um, the other thing we did is we did, uh, we did a lot of research on workouts and training. Um, you did most of that if you want to kind of go in to... You were the one who found the workout that we did. Pretty so. much. Well, we, when we joined Premier at first, we have a treadmill at home, which is a clothes hanger. <laughs> so when we went to, pre to, pre to Premier at first, we naturally gravitated toward the treadmill because that's what we knew how to use. But it is unbelievably boring for me. So that's when I kind of went home and I kind of poked around the internet and I found a workout which took strength training and my treadmill workout and it kind of put some variety in there so I'm not just walking on a hamster wheel for 45, 50 minutes. So that is kind of a circuit interval that we kind of made up and that works. That worked well for us. We did that three times a week and other days we stayed active by either doing yoga or just walking after dinner or just something to do <coughs> so we were in the routine of working out. Yeah, um, we didn't use a personal trainer. If you'd like to use a personal trainer, we have a certified one up here now. Uh, we chose not to, um, and, and that was the one thing as we were going through, there's a YouTube video for everything now, it seems like. So if, you know, you, you sit at home and you don't feel like going to the gym, pull up YouTube, you know, get a workout. Sorry. Or go see Julie, she can give you a workout. Uh, it's a better choice. <laughs> We also started making healthier food choices. It was nothing for us to, she'd get a bag of chips, I'd get a bag of chips, we'd both get a tub of Lawson's dip, we'd go to a two liter of pop and those bags of chips in one night. And that was a snack. Yeah, that was the snack. <laughs> that was dinner. after dinner. Um, when you look at a plate, you know, you're supposed to divide it up into quarter sections and there would be one half of the plate or two quarters would be a, a big fatty piece of meat, the other quarter would be uh, yeah, scalloped potatoes would be a, a high-calorie, starchy side, and then if there was room for vegetables, maybe we'd put them on the plate. <laughs> now uh, we change the way we look at it. When you look at our plate now, it's half vegetables. There's a small piece, one quarter of lean meat, and then one quarter of a healthier starch, so like sweet potatoes over white potatoes. Um, I mentioned quinoa earlier, quinoa over rice. We don't eat rice anymore at all just because of the way it affects us. But, you know, there are other starches out there you can, you can use. Um, the other thing we do is we eat lots of fresh foods. Um, I went through Walmart two months ago, and the lady at the checkout, as I was checking out with, this is the healthiest cart I've ever seen. I didn't have one can or box in my cart at all. Everything we eat is fresh, um, as much as we can. No cans or boxes. I think, what, we get, Pasta because it comes in a box mostly, and, it, and we use the chickpea pasta now, and cans of tomatoes. And also keep a can of black beans on hand just in case. Can, black beans, if you rinse them, they're pretty they're pretty healthy if you give them a rinse when you're before you eat them. The other thing we did is we made substitutions in our everyday life. Healthier oils, um, no more canola oil, um, you know, vegetable oil. We use olive oil. We use coconut oil if we're going to cook. Um, if we can, we try to saute in water as much as we can. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you need a little fat to help things go. So olive oil, coconut oil, um, trying to think some of the other substitutions we made. Oh, um, that's the one. Greek, we use plain Greek yogurt instead of sour cream for things like that. Um, you mix it with a little hot sauce if you want to give it a little flavor, and it, you can use it on just about anything. The other thing is we start measuring our portions. Um, you have to do that. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, and when we go over the nutritional facts, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I, you look at a tw uh, even a 20-ounce Pepsi is two and a half servings of that Pepsi. So you have to measure what you're doing, especially when you're, 
you're looking at serving sizes and you're trying to count your calories. Um, we eat more vegetables, obviously, and then again, we look at nutrition facts, but we don't look at them all. These are a couple of samples of nutritional facts. Um, they're both peanut butter. One we eat, one we use to bait the traps for the mice and the chipmunks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Mostly because I'm not going to buy the expensive peanut butter for the, the mice and the chipmunks. Um, when we look at nutritional facts, I understand as you're going through the grocery store and you're, you're reading these, they can, there can be a lot to take in on all of these. But really, we only look at four things. First thing we look at is serving size. Both of these are two tablespoons, which is normally the serving size for peanut butter. Um, the second thing we'll look for is calorie count. This one is 210 calories. That one's 180 calories. Fewer calories in that one, but that's not the one we choose because of the next two things we look at. I had high blood pressure um, before, and so sodium was a big thing to take out of my, having to take out of my diet. Um, so we look at the sodium count. And after years of research, there's a war on fats. There's a war on, you know, there's a fad diet that takes fat out. There's a fad diet on calories. There's a fad diet on carbs. I think sodium is the biggest thing that's keeping everyone unhealthy in this country. When they bake something diet or healthier, they have to add something back in to keep the food fresh when they're transporting it. How many of you eat those lean cuisine meals? Have any of those at home? <laughs> Pull up the sodium. When you get home, flip it over and look at the sodium count. You're allowed. 2,300 milligrams of sodium in a day. Just to t let you know how much that is, that's less than a teaspoon of sodium in a day. One meal at a restaurant blows that out of the water. A Big Mac has a thousand in it. You get fries with it as well, and you're done for the day in your sodium count. It's in everything. So that's the other thing we'll look for. We will trade calories, which you can burn, for sodium, which you can't. You have to flush sodium, which means more water, which means more weight. So, sodium count in this one is 140 milligrams, just 5 milligrams in this one. The other thing we look for is ingredients. We want the fewest amount of ingredients um, simply because it just means it's less processed. You look at this one, it's just peanuts. That's it. It's organic peanuts. You don't have to go organic. You can just get peanuts, but, you know, um, just peanuts. This one is peanuts sugar, hydrogenated oil, so oil, 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 salt, and molasses, which is sugar. So this is the one the chipmunks get. <laughs> <laughs> we also uh, decided to make some healthy lifestyle choices, and I'll let you go through those. So since I was diagnosed pre-diabetic, I like to eat, 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 eat. <laughs> so five times a day, I'm eating something just to keep my blood sugar normal. And I'm finding that I'm less hungry, I'm less cranky. As long as I'm nutritionally fed and satisfied, I'm more apt to not overeat when I'm, I, I tend to be not extra hungry between meals. So that's just what I was recommended to do as a pre-diabetic. I find that it works for him too. Even though he's not diabetic, he's less hungry, less irritable at work. It's more approachable at and, work. And it keeps your metabolism going throughout the day. And so you're constantly burning what you're taking in. And only taking in what you need to function for any given amount of time keeps your metabolism going. You'll burn more throughout the course of the day. Next, oops, Next is to plan ahead. So every Sunday for a couple of hours, we chop vegetables for the week. Um, we get... Uh, we make beans a lot, so we'll make some beans for the week. Um, we have a recipe that I have a recipe book for you to share that were the recipes we use for our success. But I make something called lentil mash, and that goes on, on top of our salads. Every, every day, him and I eat a salad with all kinds of fixed salad, all kinds of stuff on it. Um, we also make a meal for the week. There are times during the week, tw twice a week, him, either him or I or both are working late. I don't want to cook and neither does he, so I just take out of the refrigerator what I had made on Sunday and warm up and we eat it and then we're done. So planning ahead is important. If there's anything on the weekend, like for the example this weekend, I helped him work on Sunday. I made some food Saturday night. I made some chicken and some sweet potatoes, something that we could eat cold because there was nothing to warm it up with. 
and that was our meal, that was our lunch. Otherwise, we would have been going to McDonald's or there was like a rib joint next door and that's, that's not gonna work. <laughs> it's not that we don't like that food, it's just like we don't like the way we feel after we eat it. It's just like, ugh, why did I do that? And then you just feel sluggish and you don't wanna do anything for the rest of the day. So planning ahead really works out for us. Luckily, he helps, he helps out a lot. <laughs> next, when we first reached our goal, he reached his 100 pound weight loss mark in um, July of 2013. So he was like, well, I want to reward myself, but usually we would go out to eat. Hey, it's a birthday, you know, I'm going to go, we're going to go eat something fatty, terrible, something that tastes good. He came up with the idea of getting massages. But he wanted a step further, and since he reached the goal, I was going to benefit also. So this is, when you get a buddy, you both benefit from each other's successes, so you're more apt to work toward them. When I reached my goal in um, February of 2014 of 100 pounds, we went back for another massage. <laughs> so you can either um, go, go shopping for a new outfit or fitness equipment, maybe you wanted a certain set of dumbbells, set your rewards, and then reach for them that way. But just try not to make it food. <laughs> Next is not to sweat it. You're gonna fail, you're gonna have setbacks. As long as you have in the back of your mind, Okay, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I am going to start over again. I am going to start healthy again. You know what? I had a bad night. Who cares? You know what? I know I'm going to wake up. One bad food isn't going to make you fat. It's time of bad food over and over and over again, the same habits. If you're going to, if you're going to um, make a mistake, you know what? Just enjoy it. And then know, know that you're going to get up the next day and you're going to start over again. Whether it's the next day or even the next meal, if you have a bad lunch. Plan for dinner, make it a little bit healthier, make a little healthier choice. On the other side of that, you got to work out. <laughs> so it's all about your nutrition. Is you know you get your nutrition that helps you lose weight, believe it or not. If you keep a nice, healthy diet, exercising helps you burn calories, keeps your heart strong, keeps your muscles strong. Then you can do regular everyday things without being tired. Grocery shopping lifting your stuff out of your trunk, bring it in your house, reaching those taller um, cupboards in your house. You're fine, you'll find it's easier to do that with regular exercise. And last, sleep. Actually, this isn't last, no. but sleep is very important. Um, at least, I require seven hours of sleep. I don't know, you're like 12 or 14, it seems like. <laughs> but I find that um, when I sleep seven hours, I function better, my weight loss is stabilized, like this weekend, we had a little bit of a uh, weekend with our sleep. I find myself, I wait a little more when I wait in on Monday. Sleep is very important. Your body repairs itself, you know, rejuvenates itself, relaxation. You, you need to rest, you need to rest. And last is stress reduction. There is a certain hormone that you feel, when you feel stress, that causes your body to hold on to fat because it thinks it's going into a panic mode or a flight or flight mode. If you do yoga, meditation, we did that meditation a few weeks ago, that was a great stress reduction. Um, if you like to paint, take classes, do art, something you can do a couple times a week to just detox yourself, you're, you're helping yourself, you're getting, you're getting uh, all, the, all the stress hormones, you can release them out and then you can feel better. And that's just a little, that's just pretty much what we did to change our lives and we still do this today, five years later. The other thing we did is we had to find a support system. Now, it was, we were lucky, we were both going through the same thing together. Um, but you could find support from anywhere. Obviously, family is, is the best place to, to start looking. Um, Julie's dad promised us a dollar per pound we lost uh, in the process. He did not like handing me two hundred dollars. <laughs> we didn't do it because of the money, but he actually tried to sabotage. He us. did. He was there was a point in time when we got. He asked me one day how much I'd lost, and I was probably one hundred and thirty down at that point. And he's like, "Okay, we're having pasta tonight." <laughs> no, we're not. Um, friends also, you know, make great support. Uh, you know, buddy to come to the gym with you. Uh, co-workers, um, I know lots of companies around here run kind of biggest loser kind of things you can help. Even pets can provide support. You know, your pets, you know, look at you and they love you no matter what. Uh, people with similar interests, you're sitting in a room full of people doing the same thing. Find a friend. Uh, also, if you can't or if you have trouble with any of these, personal trainers. That's what their job is, to be your support system. 
to uh, help you out and make sure that you're there. The support system, I can't tell you how many times when we were going through it, um, I'd wake up and I'm like, I just don't want to go to the gym. And she'd be like, nope, we're going. So I'd get up and go. And there'd be times she didn't want to go. And I said, no, we're going. After five years, we don't need to push each other like that anymore. We know we're getting up and going to the gym. Of course, now you work there, so now you have no choice. <laughs> so when it was all said and done, um, I lost, at my lowest, I lost 160 total. Uh, you lost? 116. 116 total. So about 280 combined. Um, I, I will tell you that today I am only about 100 pounds down from that. The reason is, is because what happens after you hit that goal? This is the thing no one told us when we started any. The real work begins after you're done. I like to call this the road to nowhere. You can find, it's a, a multi-billion dollar industry for weight loss. You can find a book that tells you chocolate will make you lose weight. You can find a book that will tell you alcohol will make you lose weight. You can find 40 TV shows on it. You can find millions of websites. There's not one that tells you how to stay right where you're at. And that's the road we're on now. That's where my struggle started. Um, I got down to 205 pounds. And because of my job, during certain times of the year, there is a point in time where I'm spending 12 hours a day at one place where I can't go and find something healthy and to pack something to bring with you is inconvenient. And so because of that, I kind of started a little bit of a backhill slide. Now, I did put on some muscle, too, and we'll go over all of that here in a little bit. But, yeah, this morning I weighed in at 279 pounds. Don't look like it, but I did. Um, you haven't had as much. You do still have your trouble. But. Yeah, there's periods of time when you're, gonna, you're just going to gain weight. As it was over the holidays, I gained, gained five pounds. But you just have to get back on track. So right now I'm at 161 pounds. Now, the reason that this road is so hard is because there's a liar in your house. There's one. <laughs> there's one thing, and I guarantee you you're using it now, that will start lying to you at some point in time. And that's your scale. The reason is, is because this here. Is five pounds of fat. Bulky, takes up a lot of space. Mushy. This is five pounds of muscle. Lean, thin. They both weigh the same. I've got a friend who had his physical for his health insurance. He weighs 250 pounds. For his height, they called him overweight, put him on high risk insurance. He's got 2% body fat. This thing lies to you eventually. Eventually your body is going to hit a plateau and it is going to stop, stop burning that and start building this. And this is denser than that. The trick is, you want that back? The trick is to not use your scale anymore. I mean, yes, step on it, see where you're at. What, what you're going to be able, the, the way you track where you're at, is where your clothes feel, how your clothes feel, what you're wearing. Yes, I weighed in at 279 pounds this morning. The reason I knew I was putting on muscle when I was gaining again and not fat at the time was because the pants I'm wearing right now are size 42. I was wearing a size 56. The shirt I'm wearing right now is an extra large. I was wearing a 4X at the time. The way your clothes feel, even you can go so far as to even take measurements of yourself. You'll, <laughs> it, it was funny, when it started to happen, I kept losing clothes sizes, but I kept gaining weight and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I just couldn't, and then we finally did the research and found it out. So the scale will eventually lie. The other thing that makes this journey hard is reentry. As you're going through the process of losing weight, you have to be a little selfish. 
you know, you're going to pull away from your friends a little bit. Because let's be honest, that, I mean, your friends go out to drink on Friday nights. They go and, and eat, you know. I mean, how many times you get together and there's a pizza all of a sudden, you know. You don't know where it came from. It's 3 in the morning, let's go to Taco Bell. You know, that's what your friends want to do. Um, assuming that they're still up at 3 in the morning. Eventually, you're going to hit a, uh, a you're going to want to re-enter your life. And there's no problem with re-entering your life. The, the issue comes in having to stay where you're at. You, you still need to make the healthier choices as you re-enter your life. You know, you have to say no thanks to a trip to Taco Bell. The pizza's in there, you have to build up the willpower and not want to go and eat it. For me, you put a plate of cookies down in front of me. If there's 12 cookies, I'm eating 12 cookies. <laughs> So I try to avoid the whole cookie thing. Um, you got anything to add on re-entry? I mean, pretty much you. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where I was here. Um, it's, I mean, planning for your life is a yeah, lifestyle yeah. change, right. not a, not a three-month health for life change. Right. So when we're done with this program, you have to continue what you learn, keep applying it to your regular life. Eventually, it'll become habit. And just do it. Right. The, the trick is to not to not worry about the number on the scale. It's funny because the first journey we tell you worry about the number on the scale. The second part of it, don't worry about it. Worry about how you feel. Worry about how your clothes fit. You know, go spend some time with your friends, have some fun, and know one night's not going to derail you. Um, the one thing you have to remember when you're thinking about the healthy choices you're making is there is not a single workout on the face of this planet that's going to make up for a bad eating, or a bad night of eating. It's gonna take time. I, yeah, I, I recommitted myself as part of my New Year's resolution to get healthier again, and I'm down 10 pounds since the beginning of the year to 279. I'd have been lower than that except Super Bowl Sunday happened, and I put five pounds on on Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday. So, you know, once you get to that point, or to the point where we're at, you know how to get it off. You know how to how to to you know recommit yourself, and so that's what you just have to do. You have to keep recommitting to all of that. Anybody have any questions? We can get into more specifics as to what workouts we did and, and everything. Yeah. What's a sample of your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner? <laughs> <laughs> it, it should be in there. Um, breakfast. We have this. Yeah, I just passed them out. Oh, you did? Wait, yeah, oh, yeah well, you were ahead. talking. Oh. Um, breakfast tends to be, for me, um, it's oatmeal with peanut butter and honey, cinnamon, dually lead a banana, uh, one hard boiled egg, and peanut butter. Um, lunch is actually that lentil mash that's in there. We put it on top of a salad, and that's the same every day. The thing we change up is dinner. Dinner will be. Well, I think tonight it's going to be the shepherd's pie with leftover from the other night. I made it with, um, I riced up some cauliflower, so I put some cauliflower in a food processor, chopped it up real fine, put it on top of, uh, it's lean beef and a bunch of vegetables, and then put that on top, stuck in the oven, and so that's what dinner will probably be tonight, because we'll be here. Is yeah. that the that recipe in there? Uh, no, I think I found that one online. Yeah. So that's the one nice thing that we liked about um, Spark People. There is a recipe component with it. It's a companion site that goes along with it. If you're bored with, you know, chicken and, and broccoli, you can go onto that site, and there's all kinds of recipes. All of their chefs kind of test them out a little bit. This and sparkpeople.com. Spark. 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 Yes, with a K. Spark. And it's also regular people like us can submit our recipes. So you can kind of look at real yeah. food that real people make. Well, Just yeah. Nice too. And there's a recipe calculator. So if like you're wondering if what you know, if you know your family's favorite dish, you're wondering what the cal calorie count is on it. You can put it in there, and you can see exactly how much it is, and then you know you know whether you can keep making it or not. <laughs> yes. When you said you guys cut out rice because of how what it did to you, did you guys just say? Oh, we ate that rice and the next day you yeah. gained weight or felt bloated or did you have like testing done or anything? It was, it was the bloating. It was the bloating. Yeah. It was just yeah. very uncomfortable. Um, and you I figured you, out. You made it, you start recognizing those things better? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's another thing. I personally, I weigh myself every day. It's not recommended if it's not for you, but I do so I know 
what I ate that may have caused me to gain some weight. Now, it's not going to be a permanent gain, but I know whatever I had eaten affected my body negatively. Maybe I should switch it up a little bit. So that's one of the benefits that I got from weighing myself every day. The trick is if you're going to weigh yourself every day to not sweat the number don't too much. Out what yeah, you don't see. freak out because your weight fluctuates. Based on you know, sleep, women, five pounds based, yeah. in a week is not yeah. a big, you know. But then right. you'll know that that will fall off yeah. eventually. Not to be gross, but based on that time, your weight goes up. You know, based yeah. on what you ate. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yes. Any other questions? Any other questions? I'll stick around right. afterward in case you know you didn't want to ask in front of everybody. I'll stick around and answer some questions afterward as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.